Good afternoon, Pete. This is Gene. And since I no longer watch the NFL or the the National Basketball Association, I've got more free time, so I thought I'd do a couple of videos. The first one is going to be to show you how I'm coming along on the parts you wanted for a small DR1. And the second video will be to answer some questions on RC groups uh, about using my favorite adhesive, which is Yuhu Pour. So for the first video here, your parts, uh, you wanted the Fokker DR1 that was flown by Leutnant Fritz Oppenhorst from JASTA 5 in 1918. And furthermore, you wanted it in 124 scale to match up with the Micro Aces Fokker DR1 that you had just built in the markings of the Red Baron. I also built that kit. Uh, I built it in the other version. You know, that being of Hermann Goering when he was the commander of JASA 27. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this kit, uh, much more so than probably any kit I've built in the last year or so. And certainly this is the best Micro Aces kit, I think, uh, that, I've, uh, that I've worked. Okay, so that's the scale. Uh, the wingspan for years is going to be uh, 12 inches. The parts, first with the wing... Uh, for the top wing, I put carbon fiber for the leading edge to give it some strength. Uh, that combined with the, the curve of the wing and the strength of the tissue will give a pretty good uh, wing in terms of the rigidity. The middle wing and the bottom wing, uh, what I'm going to do here is put some dihedral in. And the way I'll do that is... I have a center line that I'll split the wing here and then I'll make a trough on the bottom where the split is and fill that with epoxy and yeah, not you who pour which remains too flexible but epoxy and then put it on a dihedral jig and let it uh, dry. After it's dry I'll cut a slot in this area here and put in a piece of carbon fiber uh, flat and again with epoxy and that'll give it pretty good strength. The uh, dihedral is going to be further reinforced because it's going to be glued to the fuselage so we'll have a pretty good uh, three wings that are all lined up. Okay moving on to the tail pieces. The horizontal stab. Uh, I put the elevator on using fish hook hinges at the scale locations and as you can see it's got a lot of free movement and it's going to be a, a good uh, control that you can get out of it with the airplane. The rudder is also made with the fish hook hinges. Uh, I didn't glue this one on, but you can see how free moving it's going to be. Again, I used the fish hooks for this, and I'll let you put that into these holes that I put in when you start assembling your model. The wheels are my typical wheels. Uh, I, I bought rubber O-rings at the local rubber and gasket store. Uh, the O-rings are painted gray. I'm going to mount them on Depron reinforced with some plastic. And the wheel covers will be printed card. Looks, looks good in my opinion. The cowl I did in the way I usually do it. I make a plug out of blue foam, turn it. Uh, on a Dremel and then I cover it with fiberglass, light fiberglass with water-based polyurethane and some light spackle to sand it down. Uh, once I get a pretty good shape uh, I remove the foam using a Dremel tool and also some nail polish remover. And this will be when it's finished it'll be similar to the cowl that I did for the uh, Fokker D8s that we built uh, several years ago, except yours will be colored uh, a rusty red. The propeller, uh, this is the propeller from an Ares uh, kit. And what I'm trying here is I, I used the Rise of Flight uh, propeller skin and applied it to one side just to show you uh, how it would come out. And I, I'll include those patterns for you. Uh, in fact, I'll finish this prop. 
I know you're really good at painting your own propellers, but uh, you, you may enjoy this one too. Okay, the next uh, item I'm pretty proud of, uh, and I owe a lot to John from Micro Aces for the idea, and that's how to mount the engine uh, to the firewall to get the proper down and uh, right thrust. Uh, what I did was the pieces are cut from plastic, 010 plastic, using my silhouette cutter and the cutter is not strong enough to do the plastic as thick as I wanted so I actually made uh, three of each piece and laminated those pieces. Uh, the cutter is very very uh, repeatable and precise so that's no problem making multiple pieces. Oh, pretty pretty proud of that. Took a little bit of experimenting and uh, this will serve me well in the future. I didn't make the, the wheel wings, the axle wheel wing, uh, let you do that and uh, I'm sure you'll do it in your usual sprung method where the, the gear uh, is riding up and down. So I'm looking forward to how yours comes out on that. So that covers all the, the major pieces. I had intended to make a small kit for myself along the same lines with a 124 scale. Uh, this is the markings for Rudolf Klimke again with Jasta 27 like during a 1918 time frame. Uh, the situation with these small models is that the real short nose area has to accommodate the receiver, the battery, uh, the wires that go along with it, uh, and the motor. So it gets really, really busy in here. So I wanted to go back to something more comfortable for me, which is along the lines of the 16-inch wingspan kits that we have done in the past. And so this is another paper mock-up just to show you the relative size. Uh, between the 124 scale and the 117 scale which I intend to do so it, it's big big difference and it'll accommodate everything I want to put on in there so that covers all the pieces uh, I should have it finished hopefully in the next week or so and I'll get it into the mail and in the meantime I'll start on uh, video number two